get to go chase Jimmy around the corner. something and I need to get gloves freezing. Uh, we got our block heater today for this truck. Um, I actually at the moment don't really necessarily need this. I've already tied up the cord. Um, but we're gonna install it anyways. It was 50 bucks. Actually 68 because it's shipping. Um, but basically we know this guy will start at freezing. Even with the little tiny battery that this truck uh, has come with. Okay. Glow plugs? Just kidding. <laughs> um, so anyways, we know it starts. Our fuel doesn't gel up because it's really not that cold. And it hasn't been... It's been cold all week. We're about freezing-ish. Um, but... I don't think it's anything close enough to gelling up the fuel, so. And the old V8 fired right up, no problem, uh, despite his carburetor issues. Um, but this guy here is gonna need a little help because there's no spark plugs. So in order to start this engine, uh, it, it running off a of diesel, you know, it uses compression to generate heat, which is what causes your ignition. So, this will get the coolant tap up to where it'll keep the block a little bit warm, um, and then it'll, it'll be able to fire up, no problem. So, this guy here, I bought off of eBay for, I think it was fifty-some dollars, and then it ended up being sixty-eight or something like that. Twenty bucks for shipping. This is a hundred and twenty volt. So this is just a regular plug into your extension cord and then you're off and running. 750 watt. It's got a good old element. They say not to run this uh, with it not submerged in coolant. And it says to make sure you have 50-50 coolant. Uh, so we're going to actually kill off the coolant that's in this engine and put new. Um, but let's pop the hood and I'll show you where we're going to put this thing. It's really not all that cold. Tempo. It's like 40 something right now, but we got some wind. Okay, so my engine block just has that tiny one there. However, on the other side here, we have numerous freeze plugs. They say not to run this near uh, turbocharger systems, but I have no option but to do that. So we'll have to make a shield over there. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't kill this thing. So that's our first issue already. So what we're going to have to do is uh, get this air tube out of the way, which is just a flathead or maybe an eight millimeter or a quarter. I'll find out here in a sec. And then we're going to put some tape over that, cap it off. I don't really feel like removing my turbo at the moment because that's just going to be a whole lot of pain in the butt. So I am doing this with a cold cold motor. And like I said, we're going to kill off this coolant. So. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> we might make a bit of a mess, too, by the way. Just be careful of that. I didn't really plan on that. Okay. Okay, first things first. I'm gonna measure, we're gonna kinda guesstimate here. 
where should be two and a quarter, which is what it looks like. Okay, so I just kind of scraped away some of the loose debris there. I'm gonna go ahead and get a punch and a hammer and just uh, just really rock that guy's world. And then I'll just start putting that thing in there. And I have a, I need an Allen. I'm gonna go find out what size it is. And also wouldn't be a bad idea to put some uh, contact goo on there, which I don't have. So, let's do this. I think eventually what I'll do is I will make an aluminum shield and insulate it and put it attached to these three bolts here and it'll just kind of go up in this area and just protect them from all that exhaust heat. So I think that's something I'll probably work on uh, later on. Okay, really good thing to use I found is this pickle fork. Got it right down at the bottom portion of the at the dude there, and by the way, he will spill out more coolant. Um, thermoset is closed, so kind of created a vacuum launch. This, too short, that's what she said. But this, right in that one corner, and this, this is a little baby guy, a little eight ounce hammer just knocked it free. So, because I had it up about here and I was just reaming on it. So, I should be able to uh, pull that out of there. Not too bad. I'll probably reuse it. I just knocked it sideways, that's all. So, that was easier than I thought once I found the right tool. Okay, this is a little awkward for me. But, uh, let's see, that dips down in there pretty good. I think they said to turn it down. Okay, I'm trying not to let this debris go in here. But uh, 60 grit sandpaper, clean that right up. Okay, good deal. Okay, take some antifreeze, <laughs> whatever you do. <laughs> do not, I repeat, do not lose this hardware. So what I need to do is kind of have it find a way to drive it in without killing it. Oh yeah, that thing's got, we gotta keep working it. Keep working it. Oh, this sucks. It's supposed to torque it to 120 inch pounds, but I don't know. Check that out. That looks pretty good, don't it? I think as I tighten it, I'll just keep tapping it just to make sure it's seated in on the way. But uh, yeah, that's, it's not the ideal spot, but that's the only where I'm gonna be able to put it. I thought there was a, uh, I thought there was a giant freeze plug on this side, like right underneath the oil pressure sensor. That would've been perfect right there in the block, but that's okay. 
Okay, I got that as tight as I can get it. We're gonna take our wire here, our plug. This is the end we want to plug into the thing, because obviously that ain't gonna work. So look at this. All right, we got loads of loads of length. I'm gonna run it between my starter wires here, and I'll zip tie it to everything. Nice knurled edge on that. You can actually grip, get a grip on it. Okay, so I'm gonna zip tie it to the stuff there. She's in there. It's really not that far away or that close to heat, so I think it'll be fine for now. But I will make, like I said, a shield for it, an aluminum shield, and throw some insulation in it. So, I mean, that's that's just where the free plug's gonna have to be. But like I said earlier, also, it's not going back there. So. Oh, you know what? I am a goof sometimes. You know what they said? Right on the, they said on the right side of the engine. So right side, like if you're in the vehicle, right side. Ah. I was like, God, the instructions suck because they're like right side, and I'm thinking, looking at the engine like this, right side, and okay. So that's going where it should be, tubes. That's going where it should be. But what they, I think what they were talking about is not to put it back there next to all that heat. So I'll still make a shield for it so it lasts a long time. But whatever, it may not be necessary. Find out if it's cheap. I can find another one. So. I got this guy here. I can actually run this thing wherever the hell I want. And they give me a good length cord. We've got enough cord length here. That, uh, Probably just zip tight here. We got enough cord length to have them dangle. Let's see. Can we fit it? Fit it right in here. Right on the ground. I'll just zip tie it. Right about there. Okay. That freaking works, man. Dude, we're set. So let's put the uh, air intake back on. Um, actually what I'll do right now, just so that we all don't forget, so that when we put our coolant in, we're not, uh, oh yeah, okay, it went right back into the thing. It actually has a rubber seal on it too, that's good. This was a nice radiator that I got. 300 bucks. Hey, right, look at that. It's like. Okay. Air cleaner. At this point, we uh, won't need any more tools anymore. I don't want to go in, Captain. Okay. 
Okay. I don't have it so it's kind of resting up stuff. This is also coming loose on me. Uh, I barely had to undo the clamp for this. I'm using a, a still chainsaw tool. Okay, you have to excuse the wind. We have distilled water. It's good. So, what we have here is we got any freeze. I've been wanting to run this stuff for a long time. This is like stuff you put in your power stroke. It's for heavy duty diesel. Diesel. So I bought two, it was about 36 bucks or 17 of them a jug, concentrate. So it looks like we've taken about four gallons out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mix four gallons of coolant, top it off. I got some extra, I think. We can do a little bit of extra water. It'll be fine, but uh, we'll be able to measure it up pretty good. So we got our, our crap of know-how bucket all set. And then I'm going to mix it a certain way. I'm going to do one jug of coolant and then one jug of distilled water. And then rinse and repeat. And this stuff is the color that I want. The color that I want. Okay, right, here we go. Oh, yeah. I did rinse this bucket out. It had some debris in it, but it's nice and clean now. This is a uh, five-year stuff, so we shouldn't have to change this for a while. I hope I don't have to open up my coolant system ever again. kind of want to set it and forget it. Okay, that about wraps it up for that. I'm gonna go back later and top it off after I get it nice and hot. Let it get all the rest of the air out, but I think we're good for good to go for now. Okay, so I'm gonna get some towels and kind of wipe this thing down and uh, call her good. I got that filled up pretty good, so if it needs cooling, it'll take it. This is pretty much full as I can get it. There's probably still some air in there somewhere, but it'll it'll, it'll work itself out. But basically, I have no coolant left over in my containers. I filled up three jugs, and basically, I only used, uh, I only had to put in three gallons, so. Um, it's not five like it was uh, last time. I don't know, last time I got way more. Um, then again, it is pretty cold, so stuff's like, eh, I don't want to really flow that well anymore. Um, I actually adjusted my idle on it, on this thing, while I was waiting for it to kind of warm up. So I've got the idle down kind of low now. It's not as fast. I'm hoping I'll get a little bit better fuel economy. I'm not using as much fuel at idle. Have y'all, have y'all listen. This is kind of unrelated to this, but this is just my day, and I kind of do like to document it. Get a little bit lower on the idle. It's not, 
but uh, eh, it's like the V8. It's really not all that shaky. Nothing's vibrating in here, so I'm happy. I've got the idle turned down as low as I can get it to go. Um, kind of where this is like in its natural, like neutral spot, so it's just naturally resting. So, I think I might put a light return spring on this right here just to have it kind of go all the way because this doesn't really do anything anymore but anyways that's that and again check for leaks I don't see any wetness over here it hasn't blown up yet so we're good there now let's uh let's plug it in and let it sit Overnight. I'll start it early in the morning when it's 28 degrees out. We'll see how it does. Okie dokie. We should have enough cord here. Here we go. Oh, it didn't spark. It's there. We will, uh, we will test this guy in the morning. Got fresh, fresh antifreeze. I didn't really flush it. This coolant was still pretty clean, um, but at least uh, we have a pretty good load of fresh stuff. All that old stuff that's for uh, cars that need it bad. Not doing the green anymore. I wanted to do this stuff in the first place because it uh, lasts a lot longer and it's better for this engine. So it's time to go. It's freaking windy.